right. And welcome to another episode. Uh, with me today, Alex Karashenko and Josh Hoffman from DevNoodle. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Hello, hello. So uh, let's give you guys a chance to tell a bit about yourselves and kind of how you got to where you are in the marketing conversation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Josh, you want to go first? Sure, yeah. Uh, back in 1990, no. Uh, so <laughs> nice. um, I... I think I would start with the two companies that I started or helped get co-found. Uh, first was game plan group booking software for um, like restaurants and, and bowling alleys and stuff um, that ran into the pandemic right before I think we were about to make it. Um, so while I was enjoying my off time during the pandemic, uh, I had a friend reach out to me to do to help with sales um, for her startup. And I kind of became a co-founder there. Um, long story short, we ended up selling that company to the company I worked for next um and then a lot of the team from that company then started another company which i'm part of now and and um in addition to that i'm also helping or, or host the podcast uh host a podcast with alex uh for dev noodle um i think we're around like 50 episodes over 50 episodes now um mm -hmm. and that's been going great and, and we use it for a bunch of purposes that i'm sure we'll get into uh but i'll cut it there i'll throw it over to alex Good intro. Um, I started Doodle in 2009 in college. Um, I'll save the story of how that started, um, but essentially um, transitioned the company a few times, always a service agency, and um, ultimately landed on development work. We did a lot of different development work, um, websites, mobile apps, web apps, business software. Um, all the while, I've Always, I like the service side because it always allowed me to do something new um, while still maintaining consistency. Um, I feel like prior to that, I just jumped from one idea to another. Um, but um, while running Doodle, um, I had a lot of other businesses on the side. So there's a lot of there's a lot of logos and brands in the graveyard, um, and one of them um, that I was actually consulting for asked me to come on full time and be their CTO. I um, told them I needed about a year to transition my company to even entertain it. Um, and it took about eight months. But the way we did it is we stopped doing software development for a while and focused specifically on website development within WordPress um, and moved to a recurring business model, a recurring revenue business model. So move from figuring out exactly how much a website would cost to build, how many hours would would, it, would be involved, the timelines. We just moved to one standard monthly price and however long it took based on the client's feedback or if the client was taking a while, that's, that's how long it would take. Um, and I knew I needed a way to do sales without being involved. And so that led into, we need a way to have a one-to-many approach. So instead of selling to each individual client, we needed to sell into, um, into partners who had their own clients and could essentially resell, mark up our services, um, white label us. And so natural fit for our industry, or it, it is for our industry and really for us, was working with digital marketing agencies. We tend to work with a lot with um, SEO agencies, um, agencies that run ads, um, not so much social media, but anything that's related to websites. Uh, and we needed a way to reach that audience, um, which is why we started the Masters in Marketing Agency podcast. We started that while I was working at the startup um, as a way for us to continue doing sales while I was essentially away from the business, um, but monitoring kind of from the sidelines. Um, but during that time, um, it gave us an opportunity to actually grow the business um, in a in a really linear way without the distractions of other big projects coming in. Um, and so we developed a more specialized team in the area, um, which has been great. We've optimized our processes there. And the startup that I was working with was essentially a rocket ship. It went from zero to 12 million in the first year, and then right back down to zero um, in year two. Um, I'll save the, that's a whole separate episode of what happened there, but I learned a lot <laughs> and um, I transitioned back in. Um, I helped them transition the software to or the CEO of that company transitioned the software into something else that they're doing now. 
and started stepping away. So I, for me, I always like you ramp up and you ramp down. I don't like hard stops or stops. So starts or stops. So that worked out. And now coming back into Dev Noodle, where you know, we have a lot of foundation set up. So it's really starting to really fuel the fire that we have. So I'm grateful to uh, to Josh that we're doing the podcast together and where it's been evolving a lot. So there's a lot of interesting stuff on the roadmap for that. Just to quickly echo something uh, that Alex said, the one-to-many approach uh, is totally the same thing that we did with Queerstacks, which was my second company. Um, and same thing, we, and we sold to agencies, right? Like at the end of the day, the agency has a bunch of clients. It's always going to be easier to sell to them, especially when you have, you know, if you're doing any kind of outbound sequencing, um, you know, you only have so many emails before you start to get flagged and things like that. So you really want to milk uh, the the outbound messaging or the outbound leads that you send out. So like, same reason even there, other than it just being an easier sale, it's also easier, you know, on the platform or the, or the tech stack that you mm-hmm. have to be reaching out to one agency that has 20 clients rather than trying to reach out to those clients individually. And, and just to talk about the product, I guess, to make it relevant, uh, we were doing reporting software for Amazon sellers. So yeah, we did try to attack the Amazon sellers individually, which are also impossible to find. They're, they Most Amazon sellers do not put their names or businesses even on LinkedIn. Um, so let's go to, let's go up one step and, and reach to out to the agencies. I didn't know that you did that. I didn't know that it was a one-to-many yeah, approach yeah, there. Mm-hmm. Thanks. So super interesting. And, and I want to kind of um, uh, paraphrase for just a minute and make sure I got this right. So rather than um you know a strong and meaningful product differentiation your marketing differentiation was to instead go after that referral partner relationship and instead of fishing for fish uh for example you fished for fishermen and in that process you were able to have them essentially deliver the sales to the end consumer uh, basically, and then you were just building the entire business around that almost secondary market space. Is that about right? Um, yes, definitely. In in terms of the the differentiation, um, the market was a differentiation, and then leaning into that, um, we knew because companies are worried especially for their own quality control to hand over the reins to someone else, especially when they've spent so much time building up, you know, the trust in, you know, whether it's specific industry that they work in, like there's, if, if they're going to fail, it's, you know, they're, they're going to feel it. We don't want to be the reason that they fail. Um, So for us, the differentiation is consistency. Um, We are very strict about our due dates um, we're very, the most important thing for us is managing expectations. And we say that, you know, we'll never embarrass you, which is, that's been our differentiation. So we have a policy within the company that no superheroes work here, um, because super superheroes create chaos and they may save the day one day and they may destroy a town next. So that was the differentiation that we went for. Gotcha. Uh, I, I'll add to that. And I like that we have different uh answers alex so maybe we'll be a really good guest uh, combo but <laughs> um it also allows you know this one to many it also allows them to resell it the, to their customer um and then it's a monetary benefit so people always will buy for one of two reasons it either saves time or makes money and in this sense and especially for query stacks it did it could potentially do both right like of course we're saving time it takes hours to go through reporting and on, on amazon and then you can actually turn around and make money yourself so um it was kind of a a two-way thing that that we could sell to them. And I, I, I love the notion that you guys, uh, you know, understanding the business challenges and the personnel challenges you had at the time, you decided to take what is effectively a quasi hands-off approach. Um, so that leads me down the path of like, okay, so, so you're building or redesigning this business. You're going after channel partners predominantly. Uh, you landed on podcast as an answer. Uh, how did that how was it when it started versus how is it now? I mean, that, that, that decision is reasonably bold, right. In terms of like how, how you might attempt to attempt to solve that problem. You landed on podcasting. What was the first couple episodes like and, and where are you guys now relative to that journey? I can start off and kind of go like how we landed on podcast uh, casting. And then Josh, if you can go into how it's changed. Um, so I feel you have a much better grip on that. 
Um, so, um, a longtime friend um, and business partner of mine, Sean Boyce, um, was telling me about podcasting, a service that he started, um, Podcast Chef, um, which I'm sure the listeners of this show are familiar with. Um, we decided to use Podcast Chef, um, and he explained the process to me, and it, it, it made perfect sense. Right, we we needed to reach a market um, that was essentially, it was, it was hard for me to get in front of um, if I was just pitching to them. Everyone gets the emails of, uh, we found your website and we could do SEO for your website and make it better or for your clients, or we have this dev team to help your, you know, to help you sell more. And it, that approach largely doesn't work unless someone is really in a desperate place. Um, and we weren't looking for clients that were in a desperate place. Um, so we needed a way to make introduction or get it introduced to companies. And we we recently, we had a guest on the show that um, at the end of the episode, he said, so wait a minute, you guys reached out to me, got me on your podcast, and then at the end of it, decided to pitch me. And the answer was like, yeah, well, if you didn't have a need, we wouldn't have pitched you. We would have just had a regular great conversation. I was like, I love it. And that's, um, you know, you just, you are opening yourself up to opportunities. Um, And um, because I couldn't be involved in the, in the podcast myself. And I also, I'm sure as listeners can tell, I talk a lot slower, uh, which is not probably conducive always to a podcast. Um, I was thinking of, who would be a great podcast host. And so Josh and I met at a, um, this must have must have been like eight years ago or more, maybe 10 years ago at a pitch uh, competition in New Jersey, um, right over the bridge from Philly. And um, we were, there were a few companies presenting that day. I wasn't presenting. Josh wasn't planned to be presenting. Um, but the third presenter didn't show up. And so um, they were just going to cut it short. And then Josh was sitting like, I don't know, you were like a, a few rows back and you just, he just popped up and he's like, oh, if they're not here, can I go? And they're like, uh, okay. And mm-hmm. he did, you know, I think you even, you had your Bluetooth, your, your, um, the flash your drive. You, yeah, you had your flash drive yeah, yeah. and you were loading it up. And there was an issue with it working, but you still like you went through the pitch. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. and um, and I was just like, man, that's ballsy. I, I, that was great. <laughs> um, and uh, so Josh and I connected afterwards and uh, got to know what each other did. Um, I got to learn about Josh's personality. We stayed in touch over the years, and you were the first person that I thought of for who would be a great podcast host. And at that point, you um, you were like, really? I don't know. And uh, <laughs> But it's been you know fifty episodes later. It's been great. So yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, a, f- a few uh, responses first uh, to what you said. Um, I talk too fast, and unfortunately, you don't get to average uh, someone talking too fast and talking too slow. So uh, I don't know how this listen- this sounds to the listeners, which I actually I have a note that I'll I'll say in a second. But uh, yeah, sorry to our our guests or our listeners that <laughs> have to hear someone talk way too fast, and then I don't think you're too slow, but like you're slower than than normal, normal cadence, I guess. Mm. Um, deliberate, deliberate, <laughs> deliberate. There you go. Um, and then uh, I, I I forget where I wrote this note. Oh, uh, and, and the fact that we like, you know, we don't really try to hide that we're, I mean, sometimes we try to hide that we're like trying to pitch them at the end, but most of the time we don't. And I've always gone in with the mentality that people just respect good business, right? Like even a good cold email, a lot of people will respect. Um, so I think, and honestly, you can get them as a customer, right? Like, hey, we got you. We, even if you if we closed you, like, obviously this works. Do you want to try it type of thing? But um, I always think that people respect good business. Um how I think things have kind of changed since the beginning and is, you know, I I've always listened to a lot of podcasts. So, and, and I think Tim, Fer- he, Tim Ferriss even has an entire podcast about how he got his bigger. And obviously he wrote a book. So, you know, there's a little bit different variables there, but um, you know, like just, just having, when you listen to so many podcasts, you, you just naturally think, Oh, that was like, why did they say that? Or, or, you know, you try to pick up best practices and stuff. Um, but when you're the host, um, it's not as evident, right? Like you, you don't know, especially in the beginning, like I had all my questions and I actually think my question format hasn't really changed that much throughout. So I think like my studying of podcasts in the beginning did an okay job there, but I would go back and listen 
And that's when you know it's like even if you cut someone off like a half a second, like it it's it's kind of a bigger deal. Uh and like when you're when you're in a converse, like when you're just conversing, you don't really think about it. You're like, oh, you know, he's over. Let me let me jump into the next topic or question or add to that or whatever. Um, so it was really like listening to the old podcast, which I don't do anymore because I, I hated it, but it was it was really good to learn because like you're not learning, oh, that's Josh on the podcast doing like like hosting right now. You're like just listening to a podcast. And then your ears are have already been trained to uh you know call out things that don't make sense in a podcast or or don't sound good or whatever. Um and that was how I changed everything it was was not necessarily just like prepping, 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 but it was actually listening um and then being like, well, I know every other podcast that I've listened to, I think that's stupid. So like take that out. Um, so I totally forget what the original question was, but that was some of the notes that I had. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is the big learning, right? You, you never really remember the original question and you that's always, right. you right. always come back to, uh, okay, well, that sounds cool. Let's keep going from there. So, uh, so in that vein, so <laughs> throughout this though, um, you know, Alex is, as you kind of were hands off in the beginning, uh, and now you're coming back more into a hands-on role and getting more involved in the podcast. Um, what are you picking up from the process that uh, kind of from an in-flight podcast to now you're more actively involved? What have you learned in that kind of journey? Um, it was interesting because I was kind of watching it um, without being um, on the episodes and listening to them. Um, I think, uh, I don't I didn't, we didn't really change much that would have not, let's say everything that we changed, I think would have happened more naturally anyways. Um, Josh had a great flow to the podcast and it's largely the same flow in, in majority of, so the prep for the podcast, I mean, it's insane. The amount of prep work that Josh does for the podcast, like Mm -hmm. some people are shocked. Like, how did you know that about me? Mm -hmm. Um, which is always cool. And then, um, so we have a lot of material going in and I didn't, I'm not going to change that. So basically I come into the podcast with just like a couple of questions from the understanding of what that agency owner is going through in managing their clients, in managing their people or the, the, the work itself. And so I'll usually, I'm usually quiet throughout most episodes, except for like a couple of questions that ask them ah. to go a lot deeper than they would have That's on specific I wrote, topics. I wrote dive deep. I said, I, I wrote my, my note here is I can transition mm-hmm. and prep. Alex can dive deep. That's literally what I wrote there. So, yeah. so it gotcha. creates, yeah, it creates this nice dynamic. Um, so I'll just, I'll just listen throughout and I'll have my notes from the prep call of like, who I really want to get them on this topic and go deep. And as we've done that, the conversation transitioned from initially, how did you start your agency? Cause we want to tell others like, here's essentially, here's a roadmap of how you can start an agency like this. If you're, if, if that's what you want to do to, the future of marketing and obviously we're going through this transitional time right now with artificial intelligence being available and in, in essentially in everyone's hands as creators um is changing the way marketing is done so we wanted to dive into that and what's you know how it's being leveraged um and really changing the changing agency life um and now as we've started going through that we we took a step back and realized that we've because we were keeping a spreadsheet of everyone that we interviewed, what services they do, what they're specialized in, what things they outsource and what kind of dawned on us. And it's like a kind of, it helps us as well because um, I've never been great with consistent follow-up because I'm always like onto the the next thing or whatever's in front. Um, So we needed a way to make, the pot, um, basically another touch point with the guests that we had on the podcast and podcast chef was, was great in helping us with that because every time we have a new podcast, they send our podcast out to the alumni network of other guests that we have interviewed before. And we wanted to take that a step deeper. So now the podcast is transitioning to, we're still going to be interviewing the same, um, the same audience of agency owners, but we're going to be also doing a public build of a community where we can have um we can showcase the different skills and spe- um like specific specializations of each agency and also for them to tell us here's the 
here's who we outsource to the most, like what kinds of services we don't do in-house, but are kind of parallel to our business. Um, and here's where we're good fits. Um, and where, what is also really cool is, you know, there's, there's certain moments like you click really well with some people and it's like, you come out of that conversation. It's like, dude, we should partner with that person. Like where did that just like was going? And then other people are like, uh, maybe not a good fit for the community. And so, um, you'll be, be a really interesting journey. So that's kind of where it's transitioning to it's moving into the community side. So two questions. Uh, first and foremost, are you guys going to continue the whole Jay and Silent Bob kind of model throughout that community development conversation? And secondly, how are you going to monetize the community? Because that's a huge um, uh, conversation, right? You can't build a community um, with goodwill and trust and then immediately be like, oh, yes, and that'll be thirty nine ninety five. How are you going to kind of work that into the conversation in a way that's not going to essentially erode the community before it starts? Josh, what are your thoughts? Uh, Jay and Silent Bob, a uh, great movie. Um, I think the reason it works so well is because they were opposites. And uh, I think that worked really well to answer the real question. Um monetizing the community well first of all we're we're kind of in like inning two maybe even like the back half of inning one uh the bottom mm -hmm. of the first um with you know our strategy and what we're trying to do i think we definitely have a lot of intention which i'll you know i won't just say that and then leave it but um i i think being very upfront about monetizing is important but i don't think we're like to get into the community is not you're not paying to play you just join the the podcast so like or, initially everyone has already benefited right like you're getting out you obviously join the podcast for some kind of reason um like you want to get out there a lot of people just they want to stay relevant they want content being so that's already done we already had the chance to sell so like check mark on on you know the relationship between us and what we're trying to do beyond that it's it's we're really and and we're not just saying this like we're trying to help you and if you help like if we help you can you help us type thing but uh what we want to do is basically share referrals at the end of the day, marketing agencies, like a lot of them will say they'll, they're, they are full service. Um, but even if they are, there's gotta be some kind of services they don't, they don't provide. And what already happens in the industry is they look for referrals. They had, they hit their partner or their, uh, their friends up that also run a marketing agency. Oh, we don't do photography, but like, you know, I know this, this other agency that does photography. Why don't we partner with them? So rather than, making that very unstructured which it probably is now and there's some sites that do similar things but it's more like for the consumer to find agencies there hasn't really been anything that's agencies finding agencies um which is what happens no matter what anyway so let's build a platform let's build something around that um but at least our intention right now is not to make it some big dot com you know sharing referral website it's starting with our our podcast um so i we we've brought it up almost to everyone that we've recorded to lately about hey this is our intention and um we're not charging up front so like there's you know check that off we don't have to worry about that uh but can we give you business like sure um will we take a portion of, and then call it like a referral um charge or whatever i think we have to uh but i also think that everyone in the ecosystem is more than okay with that all they want is for their customers to be happy and when their customer asks for something that they don't have and they can go through this effortless process to just get the answer. Like, I think everyone will pay for that. Uh, so that's kind of how we're, we plan on monetizing it. Interesting. Agree, Alex. Yeah. I, um, I don't think so, we even talked about this out loud. Uh, yeah, to we each other. I think we both um, had the same idea, dun, dun, but dun. yeah, I think there <laughs> is, there is a need to monetize it for, I think anything that we do kind of develops develops as its own entity essentially um so it has to make sense by itself and not just be a you know make sense as part of something else like for dev noodle purposes um selfishly dev noodle will benefit um from the community um by having you know a, a, you know, a major stake in in the community and helping navigate where that community goes because we need a way to keep in touch with everyone that we've met as guests because they may have not had a need uh, for our services when we met 
or when the episode was released, if it, even if it was months later, but a year, two years, three years later, they may have a need from that and our, our services may have changed or their, their needs may have changed. Um, so there's a, there's a direct benefit there. Um, there's, there's also this concept that I don't even know if it makes sense to bring up, but Josh, you've been thinking about, yeah. Do you want to go into like how potentially, I, I yeah, I don't know where you're going with it. I'm excited. Oh, I was going to say, well, so your, your, your background, at least for the last few years has been in the M and a space mergers and acquisitions. And there is a lot of consolidation happening within marketing agencies, um, especially when they are already partnered and consuming each other's services. So there could be interesting opportunities there that I just, first of all, I, th I think it's interesting. And any, anything that you do that brings value to others becomes this kind of pool that you can fish from later. So that's mm -hmm. the way I'm looking at it for DevNoodle, where essentially it's a huge, the podcast has become a huge asset um, for DevNoodle. And we're literally, like as Josh said, we're in bottom of the first, we're just scratching at the surface of what this can become. So we we're focused on building value there so that that pool grows, becomes more valuable for everyone else. And we'll find ways to monetize it later. Yeah. yeah I, uh, real quick on the, real quick on the M and a, um, I don't know how relevant this is, but I wrote the note down. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I've learned that everyone in the marketing space, I shouldn't say everyone, uh, most of the people in the marketing agency space, they're either looking to acquire or be acquired, uh, or that's their intention in the next two years. Um, so yeah, we've, Alex and I, I think have all three of us have dabbled with ideas, um, for the past year or two years. Um, so you know, and this one getting out of the first inning, uh, or I guess getting out of the top of the first, if we're going to continue the analogy, um, we'll see where it goes. And I and I do think, you know, inning five, inning six comes and, and we can get into the MA space and everything. And um, but I'll stop there because I, I don't think it's as relevant to Dev Noodle specifically. And real quick, just so we get our terminology, because I know nothing about baseball. The end of the first is at the top or the bottom. No, so so if you look at like the box score, okay. Uh, the, the top, it's like the top is the first batter, the first people okay. batting. So that's the top of the the first. And then the bottom of the first is like mm. when the home team bats. So the second. Got it. So like okay. the top of the first would be the very beginning. The bottom okay. of the first would be so we're at the just after. First. Got yeah, it. we're okay. at the bottom. Because we, yeah. we've talked about it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to trust the guy with a fanatic hat to tell you about baseball. <laughs> so, uh, I, I got it within arm's reach. So yeah, it will always, it better always be within <laughs> nice. arm's reach. So, uh, <laughs> excellent. This is how, how all marketers jokes on you now. You seriously, exactly. So, uh, real quick, actually, on, on a little bit on topic, uh, the one time that I did wear this on an episode, uh, I think uh, it was the most, it was the most watched um, short that we had. Uh, so hard to market. Just wear a just wear a, a Phillies hat or a fanatic. You hat. know, I have a I have an array of hats to choose from. Um, and there every time I wear one, everyone's like, yeah, not that hat. <laughs> 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 it's like, wait a minute, I got 40 hats to choose from and you're telling me not this one. Um, so I, I want to get back into the community concept briefly because, um, and I know we're running uh, short of time and I don't want to uh, uh, abuse that, but um, with the that community concept, um, one of the biggest challenges that that you have when you build a community is continuing to maintain that engagement. So I love the idea that you're going to continue to try and nurture that. What, what are you going to do um, to, to foster that engagement? You know, it, obviously they've already recorded their episode. So mm -hmm. whatever initial bait you had on the hook to get them to participate is now spent. What, what else you got? So we've been, yeah, go ahead, Josh. Alex, I see you're on the same dock that I'm at. <laughs> we and this is way too hot, so I have to take this off. So when you asked that question, you know, again, t we we got out of the top of the first, uh, and that was like a little planning dock that we have, and we're going to schedule another call. Uh, and we talked about, of course, I didn't write the question down, so I already forget the question. But um, I was like, oh, the answer to that is on this dock, and I go to the dock, and who do I see? But Alex also on the dock. <laughs> so uh, that's that's too funny. Okay, sorry. What was the uh, exact question again? And then I'm just going to look at my answer in this little doc. How, how are we going to continue fostering relationships, right? Well, really even get them going Providing and then value. foster, right? Yeah. Get the community uh, going and foster relationships. Alex, where is this in our... Uh, where is I think we... Okay. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, um, <laughs> um, so 
in talking with other marketing agency owners, we came across one person where they're, they changed their business um, and we're hoping that he's going to come on as a partner for this. So that would be awesome. Um, great personality as well. And um, the he specifically focused his company after a while to taking like up like a top down look of like what's worked well, where they've actually been able to provide real value. And they call it um, commercial collaborations. So he outlined for us a um, three different ways that businesses can collaborate and essentially partner or work with other businesses. So in that we have a structure, um, we're not sure exactly how it will morph, but essentially there is there is a structure in place for how they can benefit. And one of the other things that we decided is going to be very key and, and we'll have to limit, you know, essentially, I want to say limit, but filter who comes into the industry, to the um, um, community because they have to be a good fit. It's about a give and take relationship. You can't just come in and take. Um, and so we want some of the topics that we've talked about is potentially um, we've, well, we started asking additional questions to our, um, to our guests, the agency owners, asking them, how do you work well with, how do you work with other um, marketing agencies? And it's interesting to see which approach they take. Some mm -hmm. people right off the bat say, this is what others can use me for or use our agency for. Some of them will say um, the agencies that we need to help us is this. So this is this is who I give business to. Um, so that pl plays a role. And we're planning to have these segments um, created as shorts attached to their profile. Um, it's helpful for us having a, um, with our team having a development background, because we can essentially build whatever we want for the community and still TBD what that platform's going to be. Obviously, we want to deliver it in a place where everyone is already, you know, where they're, and a platform that they are already using. So it's easy, um, but we can actually, we can go you know beyond that and have profiles and have, here's who I give business to, here's who I get business from. This is the thing that I'm specialized in. This is the area where we need help, et cetera. And then potentially um, continuously creating introductions of folks where we see that there's um, there's a there's a match that, oh, you need this service and they tend to specialize in this service. So we can actually create, we were talking about um, in creating habits for the community. Oh, you about took my answer. Yep. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we talked uh, talked about doing the um, internal and external um, triggers for the community, right? Um, it's going to be hard for us to give, become an internal trigger, but essentially we can, we have enough content there and enough that we've created from the episode to at least create external triggers to say, hey, um, you said that you needed the service. There's a company over here that specializes in this. Do you want an introduction? And that can start, basically that can be a catalyst for the community. And then we can expand it from there um, and then do things like hold round tables, be a knowledge share, um, things like that. Sorry, Josh. Yeah, I'll try to add something. <laughs> she took it all. Um, I, I'm actually just gonna, I think I'll break down a lot of what you said specifically. Um, uh, cause literally what I, what I wrote in my little notes is, do you guys not write notes? Do you, do you just remember everything that you're going to say real quick? I, um, I have whiteboards all around me that you, you know, I'll write down stuff. I, no I notes. like, will forget everything. Uh, I'll be like, oh, uh, I'll just respond to whatever Alex just said last if I don't take notes. All right. Not to digress, uh, to building a habit. Um, yeah, that's the big thing that we focused on. I know Alex actually is in a, in a reading group right now that they just read a, a book about habit. And I thought that was very timely. Um, so that's really what we focused on and. It's, it's not even that it was timely. Like, I think that's the only thing to focus on, right? Uh, we we plan on our initial email that we're going to send out to be very specific, make it very easy to do and just use that as the first trigger to get into the habit. And then, you know, how do we continue the habit? You know, having things like roundtables, um, if there's a new member, uh, you know, sending out an email, just something that just little triggers that are, it's easy enough to open an email if you did actually sign up for it and you did, you know, you do want value out of the community. Um, but I think, right. Yeah. Just to, just to echo what, what Alex said, it's, it's all about that external and internal habits and just having one of them click. And then once you close business, like, you know, you always come back to us, um, hopefully. So yeah, just, to, to add there. And Brian, before you go too far, um, because just in nature of podcasting, um, 
I know that you come from the world of um, referrals um, and referral marketing. What suggestions do you have for us in that, you know, with yeah. it? So it's a really, that is a outrageously deep uh, <laughs> well. And so what I want to do is set a, uh, a hook for that. Um, and when we do our crossover episode with the Dev Noodle uh, Masters of Marketing Agency podcast, I will go into that in further detail mm -hmm. on your show. That'll give our listeners a reason to look at your show and vice versa. Um, and the reason that I want to do that is because I want to uh, make sure that I can give it enough time. And we are literally coming up on the longest episode we've ever done here on Hard mm -hmm. to Market because it's been mm -hmm. so fun. So I don't want to I don't want to dismiss it. Um, I do want to give you guys two things, uh, two tidbits. Um, there are two books uh, that I would recommend you guys look up as you start to build a community. Um, one is by Peter Block, and it's literally called Community, um, and it talks about how change is made at a community wide level. The reason that that's going to be useful because it talks a lot about how to make sure that the marginalized peoples in your community stay engaged. Um, and it's real easy to feel marginalized as a lurker. <laughs> so you're going to have folks that participate there. So and in that way, that book is uh, absolutely terrific. And the other one what was the is, what was the author's name again? Peter Block. Um, uh, and the other recommendation is uh, Corey Doctorow um, wrote a absolutely amazing article on the uh, he calls it the enshittification of online services and how communities uh, die online and how to prevent it. Um, and so the moment the community has to become monetized, for example, that's when, you know, Facebook like ruined Facebook before Facebook, <laughs> before it was like, you know, super engaging, super effective. Same thing's happening with Reddit. And the uh, he, mm. the articulation of that life cycle of the death of those environments is absolutely, um, it at the very minimum, it'll give you a set of warning signs to make sure that you're staying on the rails, as it were. Um, but beyond that, I want to close our episode by saying thank you. This has been awesome. I think for anybody listening, uh, not used to the the, the timeline. Um, uh, by the way, forty minutes have passed, and uh, we'll have these guys on again to get even more detail and depth on a future episode. Um, so before we bounce, though, I definitely want to get uh, one reading recommendation from each of you. Uh, regarding kind of where you're at and where you're headed. Wait, does that have to be? Does it have to be like relevant to what we talked about, or does it not no, have to? No, be no. It can if if you want it to be the circus training manual, that's fine. But yeah. you know, marketing okay. relevant might be interesting. Oh, I'll let Alex go first, then I'll try. <laughs> um, so as Josh mentioned, we're in. Um, we have a book club um, that initially was started for our project managers, and it's it's expanded a little bit from there. We we still keep it pretty tight. Mm -hmm. um, and the book that we're reading now, we've gone through a few. Um, the book that we're reading now is called The Power of Habits mm -hmm. by you know, I think Charles. Oh no, no yeah, guy, Charles. Charles Duhigg. Uh, yeah, yeah, do it. Um, and the reason I really like that book is. Um, if you're a person who's analytical and you need to kind of like trust the science before you dive in and try something, um, that book does a really good job of going through why people develop habits, how those habits can be changed, and what about habits is really hard to change that you should probably avoid doing. So it becomes a nice roadmap with a lot of good case studies built in, um, some of which um, in um, from like scientific journals, some of which from business cases and people. So it gives it's um it's a great book. It's my second time reading it, maybe third. Nice. Um and I yeah, so we in the book club we go literally chapter by chapter. We read mm. a chapter and we discuss it. We take takeaways, build action steps around those, come back to them, discuss again your takeaways, what are the action steps from this chapter, and how did you do for your action steps? So all right, so that are just building that habit. Awesome. That's great. I have very little on marketing. Uh, so the only book I could think of that I read in the past two years uh, that might be related is called Tribe. Um, don't remember much about the book. I think it was something about uh, we don't have tri we were losing the community aspect of like especially Western culture. Um, 
so something about that but the two books that i uh would <laughs> really wanted to say just because i love them uh is once upon a time in hollywood by quentin tarantino because i'm obsessed with him uh that was amazing because he it's the same timeline as the movie except different storylines within that timeline uh so it's excellent i don't know i was going to try to tie it to marketing and, and bs my way through but i don't i can't and then uh, another book that i'm not sure if i can relate it to marketing but i'm going to say it anyway is something that brian you just posted recently which is obstacles the way uh that might be my favorite book of all time and and you actually in your linkedin post said exactly what i say about the book which sure you can read the whole thing and it's and that's fine and dandy but Honestly, the title says everything you need to know, um, and you can get a lot of lessons just by reading the title, which mm -hmm. is, again, obstacles the way. Um, and you can have your own thoughts that are pretty close to what they're trying to share anyway. Obviously, I think Brian Holiday is amazing. He's my favorite author, but um, those are my three recommendations. Awesome. By the way, Tribe was a good book. I just I just don't remember much about it. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for your time today. Um, I, and please uh you know put a pencil in that we're going to get another episode in with you guys uh to talk about your community and how it's developing uh we'll do that in six months to a year and kind of see what happens yeah, thanks so much for being on the show, show. Perfect. yeah Perfect. that'd Thank be you. cool